Okay, welcome back, everyone. Hope uh, the break was refreshing, and uh, your attention, like we can have your attention during this particular session. So we are talking about faith, and we saw um, the emphasis that Jesus placed on faith and the teachings that he gave us regarding faith. So we are learning about uh, applying the faith in our lives, operating by faith. So some principles we've learned, we said that we must believe if we want to see the glory of God. We said that even when things are difficult, we can believe. We must have a desire uh, and our will must be in line with what God wants us to do. Uh, and we said that according to our faith, you know, we will receive, which is why our faith should be, um, hopefully it should be a big faith. Uh, then it is so pleasing before God. Now let's see what are the other teachings that Jesus gave us. Uh, I said that we must speak our faith. When we have faith in our hearts, one way to release that is through the words that we speak. Like even if you look at you know Psalm 91, the psalmist knew that. Uh, we, we read, right? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. But this thought of protection, he's saying, if I live in God's presence, I will live in God's protection. All right. But the next verse, he starts declaring. So what does he believe? He believes that when I am in God's presence, I have protection. That is the belief in his heart, inside his heart. But in verse 2, he says. So what is in his heart? He declares it. He says, I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. The God in whom I trust. So, faith of in the heart is good. But the faith must become our confession. Our declaration. Okay. So, we need to speak what we believe. When we speak words of faith, that's when things will take place. Like we said, Mark chapter 11, Jesus spoke to the fig tree and the fig tree withered from its root. So we must speak our faith. We must even um, speak. We could speak to things. We could speak to nature the way Jesus spoke to the storm. He said, he commanded the storm and he said, be still. It was still. So when we carry faith in our hearts, we must speak. Okay, we must declare. There are so many scriptures. Um, I won't read everything. Maybe I will read one. So Matthew 17 and verse 20, Jesus said, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there. And it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. So if you have faith as a mustard seed, what will you do? If you have faith as a mustard seed, we have faith in our heart. What should we do? Next step. You will? You can do anything. But if you have faith, what should you do? Next step. Just tell me the next step. It's in the verse. You will say. If you have faith, you will say. So sometimes we have faith, but we say something else. We say... I can't do it. Or we may, you know, um, say God can't do it. We believe God can do it. But what are we saying? He can't do it. 
where is the faith because words are not matching the belief in the heart going back to the sunday declaration so positive right i am healed i am blessed i am triumphant i am victorious but after sunday service oh i am bored i am poor i am you know i am hopeless i have no hope everyone hates me so many things we say but where is the faith only 10:30 am to 12:30 am or 12:30 pm whatever faith is rising soaring like an eagle after we leave church where is the faith of the heart because words have changed but matthew 17:20 if you have faith as a mustard seed not too much little bit if you have faith as a mustard seed where do we have faith what did we learn faith is of the heart so we have faith as a mustard seed in the heart right what should we do next step you will say what do you believe the psalmist he believed god is my protection so he said he who dwells in the secret place of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord so my declaration is he is my protection okay now if i believe the lord gives me wisdom i will say yes god will give me the wisdom i need i will you know excel i will do well god goes before me so my confession is matching the faith in my heart if you have faith as a mustard seed you will say right you may look at our future and say oh there is no hope but what does the bible say for he knows the plans that he have for has for me plans to prosper me not to harm me to give me a hope and a future so who should i say this for myself i know my god has a good future for me because i have faith in my heart i say so to be careful about the words we speak you know, sometimes we just say so many things but be very careful we must speak according to the faith in our heart if we have faith say it okay, maybe i'm feeling you know pain in my body i'm feeling sick but faith in my heart says you know jesus has carried all the sicknesses on the cross you know the mighty name of jesus god gave jesus the name above every other name so no sickness is greater than the name of jesus so i speak that i believe must it sit faith in my heart so i will say god your name is greater than what i'm going through god you've already carried this particular condition i know i can walk free i know you can give me you know a new lungs or you can give me even a new organ if i need it you can do everything so my confession is aligned to what i believe so what we speak is actually a release of our faith so what we speak is important we understanding okay so to release our faith we must stay that's what jesus did when he cursed the fig tree what he believed he just said when he saw the dead man he told lazarus lazarus come forth did it happen yes or no yeah it happened the dead man came back to life he operated the faith of his heart by the words that he spoke same thing today look at the life of jesus how did he apply his faith he commanded i re, you know fever rebuke uh, demons come out sickness rebuke command the sickness to leave okay command the dead man come out happened how faith of the heart is released through the words of the mouth who taught us this jesus taught us okay so that is why even in the example of uh, the fig tree once he cursed it and his disciples were surprised they said how did this happen you know how did the fig tree dry up 
just one day and the tree has dried up that's when jesus told them have faith in god you know why because he was trying to teach them a lesson that i did it through the faith in my heart i spoke the faith in my heart and it happened you have faith in your heart and even if you speak to the mountain it will move so he is discipling or he is training the disciples you know sometimes what teachers do they'll show you what needs to be done so that you can do the same thing right so he did it in front of them so that they could also do it if you have faith in your heart you will stay so release faith through the words that we speak now let's go on to the next part here for us to understand faith is exercised in prayer by believing you have received when you pray so in matthew 21 verse 22 uh, it says and whatever things you ask in prayer believing you will receive remember in the prayer course we are learning about praying a believing prayer so what is the right way to pray believe See, with faith in our hearts when we pray we need to pray in faith because if we don't pray in faith what's happening it's all like a guesswork yeah something god may do god may not do there's no faith attached to it but what is effective prayer powerful prayer successful prayer a believing prayer even jesus said that whatever things you ask in prayer we can ask for so many things in pr in prayer but what is important believing believing that you receive later on in the book of james we will see james chapter 5 where james says when somebody is sick the elders of the church should pray a prayer of faith so a prayer of faith is what is effective just praying without faith is not effective so uh, when we pray pray with faith in our hearts believing then what happens you will receive if you prayed believing you will receive understood so these are all connected prayer faith receiving from god now let's move on one more scripture there mark 11 verse 24 says therefore i say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them so when you whatever things you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them so if you focus a little more you know uh, with a little more attention what it's saying is there are things you will have you will have them later but today what should we do you pray believing so what is the order first you believe then you will receive sometimes it's easy for us to believe when we receive right it's almost in your hand then you say yes god i believe god is like there's no faith in that because you already have it remember we talked about hebrews 11 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things you know um uh, unseen yeah so now faith is but for the things which are yet to come so that is what jesus taught with regard to prayer also so maybe today we are praying and we are trusting god uh, for the fulfillment of his promise upon our lives but today i got to believe and trust yes god you're going to do it it will happen so do we believe like that that's a question we have to ask ourselves otherwise what's happening is we we'll, we are only wanting to believe when it happens but that's far away there's no faith in that so in prayer when we pray we must believe that you know we 
will receive it then we will have it so one thing that we can do when we have faith in prayer is say what what did abraham do we talked about it he prayed in faith but he did something he used a, a certain kind of prayer a type of prayer believing prayer okay one more one more type of prayer giving thanks unto god okay one mark minus from a prayer course for everyone okay so he uh, believed yes but he also gave thanks because in his heart it was already done did you all understand what i'm saying okay fine i believe you let's go to the next portion over here so we first believe uh, and we pray that way then we receive from god now moving to the next point which is point 8 faith must be acted upon so this is also what jesus taught us where um, you know he said that if you have faith you show it if you have faith you say it if you have faith you show it i think about noah okay he was way back in the old testament and god called this man noah when god wants to do something he does it through people right so he picked noah noah can you do this can you build an ark and when we study about the times that noah lived in we understand that um it never rained rain was something that people did not understand what it was so god told noah noah look i am going to destroy the world with a flood i want you to build an ark okay thank god he didn't doubt that god could do that god how will there be a flood how will you wash out the world nothing you want me to build an ark okay i'll go build an ark and he started building the ark and people were laughing at him people said what are you doing how can you know the sea is far away how can uh, you know you take this ark such a huge ark how are you going to push it to the sea they may have asked him lot of questions but man of faith faith is in his heart so how did he show his faith he did something he did what god told him to do what did god tell him noah build an ark so he built the ark so when we have faith in our hearts god calls us you know at the right time to do something what can you do to show your faith okay uh go by the leading of god don't just you know try to uh, apply all this very randomly we you know sometimes god says if you have faith you take we we use the term the leap of faith meaning faith is there but you got to do something sometimes we say i know god is calling me to do ministry but we never even volunteer in church brother you said god is calling you for ministry yeah like it'll happen but we are still waiting one year two year three years four years not even little bit something you know i'll i'll at least greet people or i'll at least put chairs nothing but god is calling me to ministry if god is calling you to ministry whatever your hand finds to do today do it isn't it why because you believe in your heart but you got to put action to what you believe if we say oh god is going to do many miracles many signs and wonders through my life if you find one person today go pray for them why you're putting faith to action right so my faith says god will do miracles through my life how can god do miracles if we don't engage with him by ministering to people so pray take action we say so many things that god is going to do this god is going to where is the action what is the action and even jesus he asked people stretch forth your hand to the leper he said stretch forth your hand it's only when the leper stretch forth his hand that it became clean so there is an action required on the part of the person 
if they really had faith in their heart, they did what Jesus told them. Take up your bed and walk. What if the person never took up their bed and walked? They would have just been lying down there. Because they did not act on the faith which is in their hearts. So usually, God calls us to do something. Demonstrate your faith. Right? If you believe, what can you do to show that you believe? Right? So faith has to be um, coupled with action. And we need to follow the instruction of God. Now going to the next uh, part of what Jesus taught us is faith is in different measures. Now I know we've already spoken about these things earlier, but I'll quickly touch on it. Uh, we saw how people had unbelief and Jesus could not do anything in those places. Meaning no faith. No faith in the heart. And God, even Jesus couldn't do anything. Imagine. Right? But there were places where Jesus said, Oh, you of little faith. Right? So there can be little faith. And at times Jesus looked at people and said, Oh, wow, what great faith. Like the centurion, like the woman who came to beg Jesus to, he to deliver her child. Great faith. I've never seen such faith in all of you know Israel. So God can um, recognize, identify. There is no faith. There is little faith. There is some faith. There is mustard seed faith. Or oh, there is great faith. So we can improve or increase in the level of our faith. We can make it grow. And remember, we use that example of exercise. Because faith is like a muscle. When we exercise it, more and more, what happens? It becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. Okay, So this is something for us to understand. But how to increase our faith? How do we increase our faith? You have the opportunity to score five points. Just like that. How to increase our faith? Prayer. Yes. Word of God. Okay, what believe. is the... Okay, believe. What is the main way to get faith? Main. Give me one answer. That's right. So remember we all discussed that scripture, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if I want to increase my faith, I have to take in or um, consume or hearing. internalize the word of God. The more it goes in, what will it produce? Faith. Faith will come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that is the main way to get faith. So if I'm lacking faith about any matter in my life, what should I do? Go spend time. Take your Bible. Take your you know, uh, scriptures and start to spend time. So I have this one um, uh, example that took place uh, in the life of someone I know. So just before the exams, okay, and this particular student was a brilliant student, but going through, um, you know, some depression and mental health issues. So what happened is um, closer to the exam, she was not able to concentrate, focus and get uh, good marks. So usually before board exams, people have the pre-board exams, right? So in the pre-board exams, she performed very badly. And um, at that point, you know, their parents called for prayer and they said, please pray for this child. Uh, actually a good child, but has gone through a lot and uh, in this situation. So uh, one particular pastor gave her a book. And uh, it um, basically the book was filled with scriptures on different topics like, you know, uh, um, confidence, um, learning, wisdom, understanding, so many verses about each of the topics. And the pastor just told her, you do one thing, whichever, whichever um, you know, topic you, you uh, whatever is relevant for you, 
you go to that section and start to meditate on the verses just spend time on those verses so she mainly meditated on wisdom because as a student what do you need for exams you need wisdom isn't it so that's what she did and in the given period of time she just you know went ahead and read the verses again and again and again wrote the verses stuck it stuck it on her cupboard here there everywhere so that um faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god so you should not miss the word the word should always be in front of my eyes the word should go into my heart so she meditated 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 on those scriptures and not just meditated but um also studied as much as possible right but uh, the testimony is something like um, um in two really difficult subjects uh, in like you know cbse board exams 12th grade she scored 100 out of 100 okay and uh, when we like asked the person how did you do this your pre board exams your marks are so low and your board exams and the topper of the school so her name is written on the board and you know above 90% in a particular stream a 12th board it's not a joke that something like this has happened but her testimony was that yeah i tried i studied i worked very hard towards the end but i also trusted in the word of god because god's word says he will give me the wisdom god's word says that his spirit is the spirit of understanding right and um, yeah so by the power of the word when we get the word in what happens faith may be no faith low faith but it starts to rise we can build faith for anything in our lives as long as it's in the word of god right so even for healing what do we tell people okay if you're going through a sickness pull out scriptures that talk about god's healing why faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god listen to scriptures you know you sometimes you have those audio uh, scripture repetition about healing about peace uh, about so many things when we meditate on the word faith will start rising up okay so this is the way we can build faith in our hearts um and so faith can increase so don't worry if you know we feel today we don't have much faith that's okay we can build it build it in the area wherever you want faith to increase okay another section uh here says that great faith is believing what god has spoken so we agree with that um we just put our faith in what god has spoken it's like the centurion right he told jesus lord only say a word you say one word enough how did god create the universe the the world by his word right uh how many how many pages did he have to speak before he created the earth it's a trick question how many pages did he have to speak yeah one sentence let there be light and there was light so god is demonstrating the release of his power through the words that he spoke because the words carry power and authority and that is what the centurion understood he told jesus jesus don't even say one sentence one word is enough say one word jesus my servant will be healed okay so this is how when we simply put our faith in so much has been spoken in the word right we we talk about the the logos logos is the written word of god uh, but uh, there's also the rema rema word is a, a a quickened word of god sometimes when we are reading the bible there is a scripture that just comes alive to us a scripture that uh, we feel like hey god is saying that to me right now okay that is the rema word rema word that god speaks so hold on to the word whether it is the logos or the rema and don't give up and right? don't give up on that word when we believe like the centurion Jesus only one word i want then 
it'll happen so i can you know share so many testimonies uh, from uh, again from my college days so i i remember that um, um i i think i shared with you all right the first year was really difficult to to navigate through uh, but when i was reading the bible the story about jesus and his disciples going to the other side of the lake he told them okay i will see you at the other side okay? somehow when i was reading this passage in my quiet time uh it felt like god was telling me regarding my exams that you will be fine you will clear your exams you will be on the other side so meet you on the other side okay uh, and i really struggled like how will i clear all these papers uh, but one word in my mind which i felt it was like the rema word which jesus told his disciples i will see you on the other side so i held on to it i i was like i used to declare it but lord you said you will meet me on the other side i will be on the other side nothing will keep me this side i will move on to my next year and my next year it'll happen right but what happened um, at the end of my exams is the results came but there were two results which were withheld by the university one was mine okay can, you can imagine the stress and it's my first year and i don't know what happened whether i, I cleared i didn't clear why did this happen and so i went back to my professors and they said no you have to go to the university office you go check maybe you have written some wrong um, serial number some number in your uh, paper so we don't know usually when this happens you have to wait at least 2 months for the university to clear it okay then you can go to your next year but unfortunately you will miss you know 2 3 months so you will have to repeat uh, this course and i was really disappointed i was like god but you said see you on the other side what is happening why is it happening only to me okay so anyway i just prayed i prayed the word and i said lord i know you said to me see you on the other side but i'm not on the other side but i believe in your word it is going to happen it won't take 2 months i know you will do a miracle so i went to the university office so many things we did everything but the amazing part is for the first time ever in a couple of days they um they released the results again okay and my result came through in a few days and my professor said this has never happened in the history of the college that your marks ca can come in a few days so the other person with me i think he had failed but mine there was no issue something got missed and something and they just cleared it and they said yeah everything is okay you've scored very well it's fine right so uh everyday issues everyday matters just put your faith in the lord there's a word maybe god has spoken a word to your heart hold on to it one word you don't need a sentence you don't need a, an entire sermon even when we are listening to sermons what is god speaking to my heart if you hear from god don't leave it catch it right catch it hold on to it don't let go say god you said you said your word is true i believe you will do it so this whole other side you know it it's always in my mind because it happened in my first year of college uh, god is able as long as we trust that even one word one sentence it carries the power of god he will do what he has spoken so put your faith in the word of god put your faith in the logos that we've already been talking about pull out all the scriptures meditate on it but maybe a rema word rema word is when a scripture comes alive or a word is spoken to you just hold on to it now the next important thing is great faith is persistent persistent means don't give up you okay, don't give up you remember the lady who went to jesus who was outside the covenant and she asked for a miracle and jesus said oh the bread belongs only to the children you know we can't give it to the dogs so jesus was calling her a dog what did she say it's okay god even the dogs have the crumbs 
So she didn't leave Jesus. She just didn't leave Jesus. He would have thought, ah, she'll get discouraged, she'll go away. Leave it. She never, she never gave up. She stayed where she was and she said, God, even the dogs get the crumbs. Meaning, give me. I want. You can give me. I may not be eligible, but I understand that there could be some eligibility. So give me. So great faith is like that, which says, I won't leave you, God. You've got to do this for me. Because you said it. You said it in your word. Right? Uh, so to be persistent. Persistent means don't give up. Don't let go. Okay? Trust in the promise that God has given us. So um, we could even you know, talk about Abraham because he is, he is an example of persistent faith. What a story, right? When um, things were so against them, the Bible teaches us that ages were so not you know, logical for them to have children. And yet, what did the word of God say? That they will bear children. He didn't let go of it. Okay, till the end, he didn't let go of it. And so finally, he received what God had spoken. So in our journey, there will be times when, you know, we will feel like giving up because uh, we don't see the results or it's too difficult or, um, you know, it's, uh, it's gone opposite. We thought it will go a certain direction, but it's gone opposite. But in those times, what should we do? Be persistent. If you have faith in your heart, you say, God, I won't leave you. This is what your word says. This is what you told me. I'm not going home. I will sit here till I see you do what you said you would do in my life. I won't move. And you know something? It's not really stubbornness. As long as you're coming from a place of, um, you know, God's word is your anchor. And God actually likes that. He appreciates that. When we say, oh, you, you don't want to do it? Uh, okay, fine. And you go. God may not be so impressed. Because that shows very weak faith. We changed our plan as soon as it's convenient. But when we have strong faith, faith says, it feels like nothing is happening, but I won't give up. I will keep praying, I will keep trusting, I will keep declaring, I will keep confessing, I will keep doing what I'm supposed to do. I know, God, that you will come through for me. No, it's like a, like a spiritual strength that we carry within ourselves. Never give up. Okay. Uh, so persistence in faith is very, very important. And we have to develop that uh, in all the right things that God is calling us to do. Now let's go to the next uh, section here where worry, fear, doubt neg negate faith, right? So that also we have uh, talked about earlier in the ministry of Jesus where we said that um, when people did not believe, he could not do anything. When people worried, what is worry? What is worry? We think about the problems, we think about the, you know, the possibilities of uh, the things that could go wrong. Thank and you. we are spending our mental energy, our emotional energy, uh, worrying. It's not happened, but it's the mind. We are thinking, yeah, this might happen, that might happen. They might say this, she might say this, he might say this. That is worry. But Jesus did not encourage worry. Worry will actually, um, you know, make our faith ineffective. Okay, so look at this scripture. Matthew 6 verses um, 30 and 31, I'll read both. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith, therefore do not worry saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear? We worry about so many things. But God is saying, why can't you trust me? Okay? Have faith in God. Trust God. 
Now, this doesn't mean that we should not be wise. We can plan for our life. We can plan our finances. We can plan our time, plan our future. But at the same time, don't worry about these things. Meaning, spend your mental, emotional energy on these negative meditations. Because what will worry do? It will, um, Jesus is calling little faith. Oh, you little faith. You're so scared. What is this? Why do you worry? Don't worry. So worry and faith don't go together. Next, um, fear. In Math Matthew 8, 26, again, when the disciples thought that they're going to sink, right? Uh, he says, why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. Fear. Sometimes fear is acting opposite to faith. So worry is acting opposite to faith. Um, fear is acting opposite to faith. And what else? Uh, in Matthew 14, when um, this, is, this is Peter, when he sees that the winds are so powerful, he gets scared. And Jesus tells him, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Doubt. Worry? Fear? Doubt. These three things will try and make our faith ineffective. So don't give place to these things. How to overcome worry? How to overcome faith? How to overcome doubt? Don't give place to them. But how to overcome it? Hmm? Sister, not to worry, not uh, to be fearful and not to doubt. Yes, so not to be uh, fearful, not to doubt. So what are some helpful things that will, um, you know, wh which will um, help us do these things? Okay, by the word of God, somebody says, okay, how about meditating in the word of God? That's helpful? Believe in faith, okay, believe in faith. Fine, what else can you do to overcome worry? You don't want to worry. You don't want to be fearful. You don't want to uh, have doubt. Hmm? Increase our faith. Prayer, prayer. By prayer. Increase our faith. By? By prayer. Increase our faith, but by? By prayer. Okay. Okay. So most of you are saying two things. Word of God and prayer that's true because in romans chapter 12 the bible teaches us about renew your mind or get a new thinking a new pattern of thinking so when we renew our mind with the word of god we are replacing our old thoughts with a new way of god's thoughts okay then what happens the worry, the doubt, the confusion, the fear starts to leave. Second important thing, as all of us you all have pointed out, is prayer. Because in Philippians chapter 4, uh, Paul writes, whatever requests you have, whatever petitions you have, you submit it to God with thanksgiving. And the peace of God that passes all understanding you know, will guard your hearts. Okay. So if I want to overcome worry, fear, doubt, spend a lot of time in the word, but at the same time, prayer. When we pray, what will happen? God will remove that fear or the fear will leave and the peace of God will start filling our hearts. Okay. So that is why times in the presence of God are so, so important. Uh, sometimes we don't, we cannot grasp the spiritual things that are taking place. But all this is happening. God is working in our hearts. For us, we are just singing a song. We are just worshipping. We are just listening to the word. We are just praying. We are just waiting in the presence of God. But internally, spiritually, so much is happening. God is helping us overcome you know, all these um, negative, negative things in our minds, in our hearts, in our lives. So we need, to, uh, uh, we need to sort of put ourselves into the place where the word is, 
into the place where the presence of God is. Right? So that can be our personal times at home when we take uh, time to read the Bible, uh, pray, listen to worship, music, sing with the with the music or it can be corporate times in the church or here at Bible College but make use of every time and know that there is something that is taking place in the spiritual realm which is affecting me through all that I am doing so these are ways in which we can get rid of um, uh, these aspects but there is one additional thing and that is sometimes uh, there can be a stronghold, stronghold of worry, fear, doubt, which is um, which is demonic in origin. So that goes into spiritual warfare. Normally, through prayer, through worship, we can overcome all these things through the word. But there are times when there are spirits associated with this. Because, uh, you know, Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, God has not given us a spirit of fear because the Holy Spirit is a spirit of boldness but who is the spirit of fear there are demonic spirits that can bring fear doubt worry so there are sometimes what we must do is just rebuke so maybe I don't have worry suddenly worry is coming to me and I sense it's not from God I can just say I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I reject this in the name of Jesus. Right. So when something is demonic in origin, we can rebuke. We can push against it uh, and say, no, you can't touch me. So we go into the um, space of spiritual warfare at some times. So these are all things to bear in mind. Uh, some of the teachings of... Um, Jesus. Now, uh, the next section will be about people in the Old Testament who walk by faith. And um, we will come to the powerful life of Abraham. So I hope to complete these two in the next class. Uh, as of now, we will wrap up um, with a word of prayer. But are there any comments? Are there any questions? Anything to talk about? Yeah, if there's anything you can ask, just feel free to ask. All right, let's close then. Uh, we will pray. I want to request somebody from the online batch to lead us in prayer. So please unmute and pray aloud. Okay, anyone from online? Father God, we just want to thank you for this uh, hour of study, Lord, and the things that you have taught us, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that everything that we have read from your word and everything that we have studied in the lesson, Lord, it will, uh, it will take shape in our lives, Father. And we, we pray that as we continue to study your word, Lord, and walk in faith, Lord, you will strengthen us, Lord, and help us live lives in accordance with thy will and thy word, Lord. Bless, we pray for a blessing upon all the teachers, Lord, and all the students, Lord, in this journey. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Sanjay, for that prayer. And uh, I see your uh, comment in the chat. You say any book that will help us. Um, I think 
uh, just reading the incidents uh, in the life of Jesus uh, would be helpful. So you can go to the Gospels and study them, but also re reading the life stories of men and women of God. There are many, many books. You know, um, so I, I wouldn't uh, uh, you know, name any of them, but uh, there are many books that you can actually go ahead and read that will help you build your faith. OK, so um, we'll stop with that. And uh, um, thank you, everyone. Live by faith, OK? And bye for now. Thank you.